Well, I mean, also the dollar figure may determine which one they want to go after. Maybe they view all parties, but, you know, hook the person that has to wire the, the most money a little bit more because they're going to make the most. Sure. And why not try? Um, and if that individual bites. But I think the last transaction you guys were speaking about was a $300,000, you know, wire, mm-hmm. right, that that went out? Well, the one last week was 52000 that they lost. Mm. One prior to that with another company that we know, it was 300000 The one before that was 101000 Yeah, I mean, those are large numbers, yes. you know. And so <laughs> so strategies, it all starts at the beginning. Scripting at the beginning, I think, is so important from real estate agent to lender to title company. We're all speaking the same language, so everybody's aware. We went as far as communicating it on the upfront. We send a document out to them about beware, beware. You know, you don't want to scare them, but you want to make sure that they are truly aware. Like, do not, I'm just going to do this. No, don't do that. Don't do anything until proper guidance is given, you know. Here's um, a stat for you right here. The average ransomware, which is where if somebody's on your computer and they lock you out and they say, we're not going to give you access until you pay us, Mm -hmm. nets $722, okay? The average bank robbery nationwide average is $3,816 take. The wow. average closing scam averages a hundred and thirty thousand dollar number. Wow! So, do you want to know why people are so heck bent on targeting this industry and going after that? Mm-hmm. Because they can make a lot of money in a really short amount of time, and they're and they're working with people who just. If you go rob a bank, how many times does a bank have security in place, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. it's a little harder to rob a bank right. than right. than normal. Right. Um, malware, you know, it's only it's, it's what it is, but people can click on something. But, you know, in our business, there's just a lot of people involved. It's like a wagon wheel, right? There's all these right. spokes on the right. wheel and, right. and everybody's working. And all they want to do is just find somebody who's, like I said, just slipped. Mm-hmm. But at an average take of $130,000. Yeah, I think, I think one thing is really everybody listening has got to remember this is that unless you have special insurance you're not covered probably i mean our homeowners insurance we found out does we have an umbrella policy so we've got i think a fifty thousand dollars coverage something like that Uh, but unless you get a policy covering this um, this kind of a thing you you, your you know insurance isn't going to cover it i know that we've checked into that so you agents out there please take this to heed this is a really really serious thing again i think we've gotten lulled into thinking that because any most fraud has got some sort of limitation to it. This fraud doesn't, and I just can't imagine the the the, the compounded agony on so many levels of looking somebody in the eye and saying, you know, that's real. You actually lost that money. I mean, recently a lady in our office, Doris, you know, she kept telling her client, the money's gone, and, and the client just didn't understand it, didn't get it, didn't believe her. And she had to keep telling you, I'm sorry, the money's gone. So when people go, they're like, okay, just like your credit card. If you had a, if you had fraudulent a, a charge on your credit card, we were talking in between the break mm-hmm. about people with who have credit card situations and you just call your credit card company and you're like, hey, right. these are fraudulent charges and the credit right. card company goes, okay, we'll fraud and we'll move right. it off and go from there. Right. Because you didn't do it, right? right. Neither right. one of you did that. Somebody else did that and you didn't make those charges. Right. Well, guess mm. what happens you're right. when a person wires money to a fraudster and they go to their bank and say, hey, this was a fraudulent transfer. They're like, you did it. Guess who signed that authorization wire transfer form authorizing their bank to send that money right. to that person. Mm-hmm. They weren't there at gunpoint. Right. Mm-hmm. They It wasn't done by somebody. You have to go to the bank to wire money. You can't right. just text in your banker and say, hey, banker, wire me $150,000 over right. to Midtown Title. Right. So the bank looks at them and goes, what do you want me to, you know, they'll look at them and right. go, you did it. Yeah. We did what you asked us you to do. It, yeah. So there's no fraud on our, uh, from our perspective. Mm-hmm. You did everything freely on your own. Right, that's so hard. One thing I was shocked about when you first started talking about this, Chris, was a lot of times that money then is sent to a large bank like a, <clears throat> like a SunTrust or a Chase, not to pick on either one of those. But I thought, as naive as I was on the topic, well, those banks will step up and say, okay, well, we, own some, we have some ownership in this situation, so we'll cover it or we'll do something here. But they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't care. It's not. Again, it's not their problem. That's right. And so I don't think everybody realizes that it takes time to get money out of the country. Mm-hmm. You know, the goal is is to money to disappear. They want these fraudsters want the money to disappear, and they want to get it out of the country to go where wherever it is. There's obviously hotspot countries that are more prevalent than this than than some of the others. But they need the money to get out of the country, and it takes about a week. 
So the first thing that they have people do is wire it to one of the one of the banks, but usually one of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Not so it makes on. sense. So it doesn't look weird. Doesn't right? look weird. Right. Um, they're very prominent banks, and the first thing that they do when these people get a chance is they take it out of that account because they want to swipe the account and get the money gone put it in 10 accounts, mm -hmm. 20 accounts. And oh. then they'd split that up and put it in 20, 15, 20 more. And the chances of tracing this money down mm, yeah. after mm. that happens is virtually impossible until they can get it out of the country. It may take them 100 accounts to get it out of the country, but they will get it out. Mm. And it'll be untraceable and they'll never find it. Mm. That's so, so scary. 132,000 average. And here's the other part that I hope our, our listeners remember is that if you're not stressing, if you're not stressing with your client the importance of this right. topic and having them sign documents that you they've acknowledged you've talked about this and initialed off on it and so forth, you are standing in the line of fire as a professional. Is that that's my understanding. I understand a couple of agents here locally had to file bankruptcy because of that. Yes. They lost. But yes, because their systems were not adequate and Correct. they did not have the protective measures in place. Your industry, Monty, Carrie, and your industry, in my industry, Jason, yours too, right. um, has, you know, we've gotten really aggressive trying to be proactive to try to protect clients. It's helping, but it's not fixing the problem, mm -hmm. you know? And so we have mm -hmm. all these forms and documents that got to get signed. And I'm, I'm not with the clients on the front end. I don't know how deep people dig into these documents and explain mm -hmm. this, but mm -hmm. you know, people are all nervous, they're excited. And a lot of times they just don't hear the message. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so much coming at them at one time. That's what I've been sharing with our, our team is, look, you can't just you know, rest your hat, hang your hat on the fact that you had a document signed. That's nice. Well, you had a bunch of documents signed. They don't remember any of those things. By the time it was all done, it was a, become a blur. You can jump up and down and scream and holler and, and before they sign that one, but it's still a blur as far as they're concerned because they don't do this every day. We've got to be as proactive as we can. And so, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is actually create a protocol with your help because I totally trust you in, uh, in this process because I know you're your buffering of this potential is even greater than ours because you're dealing with the money, which I got to tell you that I don't know how you live in that kind of pressure because I'm assuming, unfortunately for you, that if if there is a loss, that they look to, to the title company, sure. they look to the title attorney, right? That's right, yes. And it, we're, the, we're the front line right. of the people who ask for money. Right. And you're the most organized of the whole process that you guys and the, and the mortgage company, of course. It's the loose... The loose uh, sometimes this comes from the real estate industry, I'm afraid. Well, you can go to our any one of our websites and freely see our logos. You can see our names. You can see our addresses. You can see usually our email addresses, our phone numbers. And you know how easy it is just to cut and paste and, right, and, right. and, and, and create right. what looks like an authentic email from either one of us. Right. And uh, and just be able to send right. that. So I think the the anxiety when I mean they could see the the finish line so close, right? Mm -hmm. The client mm -hmm. can, and they start to get this. And not everybody, but they start some some people, and just maybe it's age related too. But there's some people hey, hey, that careful, get careful. you know, um, and it could be. The, younger meaning they've never done it before so they have sure. that anxiety too meaning it's just they, maybe it's something new or that's just how they are but they want to move their money they want to do it now they want to do it now and the lender is not yet prepared because the CD's not yet finalized right. and or you know we're working back and forth to get exact figures you know but they want to send the money want to send the money when, and they see an email that says send the money so you know they just sometimes you know want to jump uh, to get it all squared away so it is hard to slow people down you know we have to pause and follow certain protocols um, for all of us here's something so safe. easy that happens in our business all the time we have to produce proof of earnest money checks or payments right if people email those unsecure and they're sending a copy of a check out that's got the account number routing number and everything else that's the answers to the test again mm. so I mean, people just freely email or, or email these copies around and if they're if they're emailing from somebody's email who's been compromised they already got the person's name they've already got their routing number they already got their account number to their phone checking phone account number sometimes. phone number everything that they need so you know one of the things we instruct people to do is is if you're going to email stuff you need to redact that information get a sharpie mm -hmm. but you can't because the lender's going to say now i can't use it so no. you're kidding mm -mm. i can't sh i can't cross anything out it's not allowed so they do that and then i say so sorry you have to send it without so that what's information. the answer they have to use a secure transfer but I mean, example, mm -hmm. earnest money. People throw it around all the time. Mm -hmm. I need an earnest money check without it, any scratch outs. Mm -hmm. 
that's what's required for me to be able to I guess that would make sense from your standpoint. Yeah. So, I mean, the problem is, we're, yes, what you're saying totally makes sense. But from a lender standpoint, I can't do that. So you're back and forth, back and forth, you know, with the pull and tug now situation. Now the old play for Midtown Title here. We have a, we have a uh, system called Earnest, which is a digital earnest money payment processing, which is done over an ACH. And all people, it's an instantaneous payment. And all they have to do is uh, they go into the secure portal and they're able to code the information in and the funds are immediately transferred. No checks. Who checks nowadays, by the way. Um, not very many people. And everybody involved gets notification and there's no transferring of copies of checks or anything like that. Mm. So, uh, you know, we, we, we continue to try to provide stuff to our folks that makes it convenient, but also safe for them. So to, you would have verification of the money that she's looking for, though? Yeah, because she would be on the email. We'd, she would, she yeah, would. but we'd have to go a step further and get the bank statement sure. from the other to show proof it came out of, you know, that account. And, and yeah. it's just taking a moment and making sure that you use all of the tools that so many of us mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. to make it safer for the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. And us as real estate agents and everybody out there listening to continue to educate. Don't assume they know. Mm -hmm. Nobody does. And um, just like people are going to still co-sign for loans, they're still going to buy the boat when they weren't supposed to, you know, they're mm -hmm. just going to continue to do those things. All we can continue to do is put processes in place, continue the scripting, educate, 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 you know, on a regular basis. And stories sell. Right. Story, continue to t share the story. The three stories that you just shared. Right. Let me, let's pause here. This is a really important part of the process. Let's talk about wire fraud. Let me share with you three recent stories. We don't want that to happen to you, right? And just, mm -hmm. that would just step you up, I think, and elevate yeah, you as a real estate I, agent. I, and I agree a thousand percent. Um, and they'll remember, it's going to be hard for them to not deny that they, um, heard those stories and that you didn't weren't emphatic about it. And again, I hate to say this, but a lot of this is you know at CYA kind of stuff because um, you know we have to do that. Otherwise, we're standing in the line of fire. All of us here have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think long as we are making first of all the security of that client number one priority. Uh, is is what's what's really critical critical but you know they can love the process all the way to the end and if it's frustrating at the end or they're not happy or this happens to them they just won't ever think that the home buying process is something enjoyable right and or they're going to blame you <laughs> mm -hmm. they're going to blame me even though it wasn't you or me that's just going to be what's in their mind so we want to already be thinking that two steps mm -hmm. ahead always yeah, right. you know and make mm -hmm. sure that they're protected so one of the questions we get then is okay then we'll just want wire we'll bring a check mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. we can we'll send a check or right. whatever we have to do right, and right. and you know our state has certain laws that just won't allow those for certain dollar amounts okay right. and what it, is it over 10 so it's it's if it's less than a thousand dollars an escrow company like myself can take a personal check if we choose to now, nobody says we have to but by law okay. we can take a personal check up to a thousand dollars we can take a cashier's check up to five thousand okay. dollars. Okay, so you could go to the bank and get a cashier's check. It cannot be more than five thousand dollars. And what I want to point out about that is that's not statute. Okay, what the, what that is is based off what the industry standard is for our E and O insurances. Mm. Okay, we we have limitations of what our E and O insurances will. So think about like an overlay, sure, right? So right. our industry, when when I go get insurance to protect me on this, this is what they allow for us mm. to do. The statute just says that the seller we have to be able to produce the buyer must produce good funds to a seller. So basically, if the seller wanted three hundred thousand dollars in singles. You know, we would have to produce three hundred thousand dollars in singles to this person. I hope not ever, ever, ever. <laughs> but um, but if so, that's what has to happen. So if you have checks, they're uncollected. Mm -hmm. You know, they still have to run through the process of doing that. Um, and then wire is is why we require that because the funds are good and they're there, and we cannot do ACHs because an ACH can be retractable and disputed for up to sixty days after the transfer date. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody says, "I don't want to wire," I'll just go ACH it to you, which is like an electronic payment, right? Right. Somebody can go. 60 days beyond the transfer date and dispute it and, re and the funds could be retracted out of your account. Could you imagine owning your house and 60 days later th th somebody says, right. hey, yeah, I don't yeah, really don't like, like this. Yeah. And so the re this is, these are the reasons we have to do this and I understand the reasons and I understand it protects everybody involved but it's just created this humongous problem for everybody mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah. don't think I think overstated the importance of it. One thing we're going to do and we can wrap up here uh, as our training is we're going to show examples. What I've asked for is all the people who've had problems, because when I got to investigating further, I found out there were seven different agents within our organization that had some sort of their client raised their hand and said, hey, 
I got this email, it's not real, right? And they kind of blew it off. So I've got all these examples that we're going to show at our trainings to, to give them an idea of what people are doing, how, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the cutting and pasting, that's part of it, logos and so forth, but it's also, there's a pattern of what most of them are using, and most of them it's in, at, at an AOL address with their with the rest of their context uh, in place. But Chris, thanks so much for bringing us, yes. uh, bring us here uh, with this topic. We appreciate you uh, being part of this conversation. I can't imagine the pressure. How many transactions do you guys close them? Uh, Last a year, year we closed right at five thousand. So we've helped a bunch of folks. But you know, I just appreciate you guys taking the knowledge to the people so they can just Absolutely. be educated in this process because there's so much misinformation out there. But you guys are just trying to help everybody uh, in, in this transaction just be safe. And so thank we, you. We for really doing are. That. We, I hate these people that are doing this. And and how do how does uh, how does somebody how's an agent that's wanting to to work with a dynamic. Uh, uh, title company that they can trust. How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, they can absolutely. So we have several ways, but my phone number is 615-921-8684. Um, you can also go to our website at midtowntitletn.com. It's got a great little title calculator on there. So if you want to know what title cost is uh, on there. So those are two ways that you can reach me. My email is chris, C-H-R-I-S, at midtowntitletn.com. Would love to talk with you, even if you're just somebody that's just trying to get some input about how to be a better professional. I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Yes. Well, Chris, you know, I, I got to put in a plug for you. You know, I, after 37 years of doing this and thousands of homes sold, I've always told our agents, look, it doesn't matter how great a job you've done. The last thing that they remember is the experience around that table. And if that title uh, performance at that att closing attorney hasn't done a great job, it reflects on your judgment. I hate it when I see agents just going along with the flow. Whoever's got the deal is that they just they don't have a, a loyalty to a, a top uh, company and I think with this kind of information it only encourages me to say make sure you've got the right people in your corner because it's a reflection on your professionalism at the end of the day. Thanks Monty and you guys we love working with you guys and this is the, these are the reasons why because you care you're invested in Absolutely. your customers and those Absolutely. are the people that we want to work with too. Absolutely. Yes thank you again Chris again great title company Midtown Title come back next week you've been listening to the talk of Music City Real Estate.